Hi friends, this is Jennifer Belair with Open Hearts Club and I wanted to share a little reflection on something that's really softening and metaphorically opening my heart space today. Uh, so this morning I decided to go for a run. Uh, it's something I've been wanting to do, something that's really a lifelong passion for me is to run. I feel like it's my first um, kind of space that I got into meditation, into my um, kind of calming down the thinking mind and running was always my outlet for that so even though I have a pretty good meditation practice now I still love running I love moving the body I love just like the action of running feels very natural and very beautiful and uh, something that humans have been doing for a really long time so needless to say I was really just so thrilled to be able to go for a run today I usually actually run with ear pods and a podcast or something like that so I can learn but I really wanted to tap into the natural world and observe it and not have any of my senses like hindered or um there's, there's just so much life out here. Um, <laughs> have any of my senses hindered? So I really wanted to be in the experience regardless of how fast I was able to fly or not. And um, there's a turkey vulture above me now. Um, so just really being in the body, uh, connecting with the body, feeling the body. Do I have aches? Do I have pains? Etc. So just that whole notion of getting out and doing something, right? Like it's, they always say in running that's the hardest part is just getting out the door we can put on the clothes and we can get all the the snacks ready that we might need before the run after the run but it isn't until we actually maybe get into the uniform of running and then we go for a run that we're like oh, we made it we're out there so while I was on this run I was just absorbing my environment and it was just so beautiful I was really happy to be back home to be in Michigan to be on the country roads where I live and to really just get to know the land and to see it for all its shifts and all its changes and that's my favorite part about being in nature is that you always get to witness the shifts and the changes especially if you visit this land regularly and I think that's just such a special relationship a lifelong relationship especially if you stay in the same land for a long time uh, we've been on our, our property, the land that we're stewards of, for maybe five years, I guess four years now, but uh, just seeing the season shift and for us we were out of town for a good amount of time so I had missed this big gap of summer that I was like, ooh, all the things are growing and I really love herbalism, I love watching plants, I love seeing the bugs and all the different natural shifts that occur. So. It was really beautiful and really fun to just go on this run, be in that natural rhythm, that natural flow of like the runner and absorb everything. And I find now that I'm so in love with nature that it's really hard for me to focus on the running part. I'm more like, ooh, did you see that? Oh, wow, there was a butterfly or this happened or that happened or oh my God, there's a mulberry tree. Um, so it's just been really interesting to observe myself as a changing human and also changing alongside nature and where I live, etc. So this run was just so majestic. It was early in the day, like maybe 9 a.m., something like that. And it was just so beautiful. Like the colors alone just blew my mind. They were so vibrant, so pretty. And if you know what chicory is, we have just like it grows on the edges of pathways and it's this beautiful purple flower that just pops like a beautiful little star. and. Uh, it's like a pale pastel purple and so I was just like absorbing all these colors and they were so vibrant and so alive and just made me feel so in the moment and so aware and it was just such a very special experience to to be on this run and to remember why I love nature and what it does for me on a physiological level I feel like anytime I'm in nature I feel like some of the psychological weight has just disappeared it's gone like the earth has taken care of that energy for me and I feel that many of us are getting taken care of by the planet and by nature without even realizing it like we go on hikes we go camping we do nature walks we go golfing we do this we do that and it's like we feel good because we're moving our bodies but we also feel good because we are coming back to that sacred remembering of our connection to the planet of this kind of like longing yearning to be connected and we can do that in social atmospheres and in work and play and all this stuff but I feel that our mother the great mother is the planet and so 
that's something that I really want to continue to be a steward of and to continue to share any findings that I discover along my pathway because I really want the Open Hearts Club to be all about um, the self-remembering, about love, about beauty, about nature, about feeling good in a wholesome and simple way and what are the simple practical applications that we can do on a daily basis and just sort of rerouting our thinking, changing like the neurological connections that we might have built up for many years and how can we facilitate a healthier, happier mode of belief systems about ourselves and how we interact in the world. And so when we surround ourselves with the natural beauty of the planet, we kind of come back to what I believe is our own remembering of ourselves. So we can see ourselves in the eyes of another person and that's a really special and beautiful thing. But we can also see ourselves in, in everything around us. And I feel that nature helps us remember that. What she does is she takes us out of our busy monkey mind and then we're rerouted into this beautiful uh, act of observing. And we're observing usually on a more elevated emotional experience. We're kind of, we're lingering in this space of observing, absorbing, taking in the beauty that's around us, being um, constantly um, stimulated by colors and and, and shapes and, and um, all different leaves and things like that. So I feel like in our modern world where we're always absorbing things online, on the phone, and having feeling like we need a million connections with a million people, it's important to remember that the way we evolved is not through having these vast uh, bits of information, but that the way we evolved is, is natural. And it's, it's about our natural environment. It's about the things that we connect with, the food that we eat, the, the groups of people that we connect with, and to be expansive and wholesome in all those exchanges because um, I find myself personally when I'm stuck in the the habit of looping and getting that that neural feedback of like ooh 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 someone liked my stuff like this is great I feel good I'm on my way to success blah 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 like that's not a healthy space to be in <laughs> it's actually quite detrimental and I feel like when we're in nature we're exposed to this beautiful wonderful natural stimulus of the senses and it's not assaulting it's not um it's not making me judge myself in comparison it's it's not making me judge another thing it's just kind of this harmonious experience of just being in it being present and i feel like nature really has that wonderful effect of bringing us back to that special sacred space and i find myself a lot of the times if i'm stuck in that that mental looping or that trap of like looking on social media or trying to find my value based on this set of circumstances that happened i don't feel great about myself um, there's an eastern bluebird just directly uh, in front of me and it's it's amazing nature's great <laughs> i'm i'm just really amazed uh, at the beauty of the planet and that's something that i want to continue to foster and share with others um, through a variety of means so like through health through awareness through mindfulness through uh, cultivating coming back to the title or the name that i've given this experience of the open hearts club of this opportunity to kind of soften those those hard layers and to remember that we are all capable of that and we don't need to come from a specific um, label or socioeconomic background or financial ability. I want to create things that are available to a lot of people and that can help lift and guide others along their life journey because life is not easy and that's something that we're all aware of. We all experience suffering, we all experience pain, we experience this multitude, this these depths of human experience and I'm I feel that it is my mission on this planet to share and to be seen in a way that doesn't represent the, um, you know, these different personas of, of perfection and of um, showing up in the best way possible. And, and, and that's why I've been wanting to do this for so long, but I've had a lot of fear where I was like, oh, if I don't show up beautiful or perfect or an expert then what is the point but the point is not to show a final perfect product perfect but to share someone on a life path journey that 
wants to guide, wants to help, wants to uplift others. So that's my mission and my, my uh, invitation to you today is to cultivate a relationship with the natural world, to reflect on the things that you love to do in nature and to think, how are these serving me? How often do I, I work on this relationship with the natural world? Am I allowing my eyes to see the sunrise, to see the sunset? Am I giving myself that stimulus of nature instead of the stimulus of the phone? And don't get me wrong, the phone is an incredible tool and I'm inspired by tons of different people on these different platforms, but I think we should practice being stimulated by the natural world, by the bluebird that's on the the apple tree wire, by the moth, by the fly, by the wasp, and even things that you're afraid of, try to look at them from a non-judgmental lens, just seeing them exactly as they are, as like these species, as these creatures. And it's always a beneficial thing for us to come back to this kind of childlike essence where we're no longer putting or projecting our egos and ourselves onto the things that we're observing, but we're just seeing them with wonder and with awe and just being in, in total um, presence with it. And I think that's the goal. I think that's the secret, honestly, to a happy and beautiful life. Uh, and I'm going to finish this off with um, the idea that we can also learn from nature too. Like there's so many beautiful parables and, and lessons that the natural world teaches us. And it's when we find ourselves in those moments where we're observing that we're learning the most. Like even on my run, I was just kind of having a conversation with myself, like learning from myself, like, oh, this is going on. How do I feel about that? Can I let it go? Let's let it go or just like reflecting and having conversations with my inner child and just creating these spaces that can be helpful and beautiful, but also being present. And I really like the idea of learning from nature and learning from ourselves as nature and thinking, um, you know, with every step that I take, maybe visualizing like I'm planting flowers with my feet, or maybe I'm asking the mother earth to help carry away some dense energy that's no longer serving so we can come up with these beautiful visualizations and, and things that um, we can use nature as a tool as a helpful tool without harming anything uh, and just see where that takes us and one of my favorite little lessons in in life and awareness and, and kind of being in the present moment comes from Eckhart Tolle's book The Power of Now where he talks about like kind of learning from nature and how there's like a example he gives of like ducks <laughs> ducks are in a pond and and they're like you know he's observing them and watching them and these ducks are just like doing their thing swimming around and then suddenly they're in a fight and they're like rah, 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 rah. like I'm mad I'm a duck you know whatever they're saying they're quacking their little hearts out and, and they're angry there's like sounds there's flapping of wings and all this stuff and then he observes in the next couple moments that now it's peaceful, it's quiet, nothing, it's like nothing even happened. The ducks are near each other, you know, and he talks about how this is a lesson in ourselves and in our world where we love to grab, grapple and grasp onto like, oh, they did something to me and I'm mad about it and I'm never going to forgive them. And we can learn a lot from the ducks, right? We can say, ooh wow, I can just let that go. And, and that's that. I move on and I'm a happy little duck swimming in a pond, living my life. So uh, nature teaches us many lessons and I hope you find yourself somewhere beautiful. I hope you find yourself connecting to nature, observing, absorbing, noticing all the beauty that's in, in everything, in the shapes of petals and the colors of the petals, the leaves, the fruit, the just everything is so magnificent and it's just such an honor to be here and to share in this collective memory making and uh, enjoying this beautiful planet together. So may, may we all be stewards of the land, may, may we all love the land and may we all step deeper into love with ourselves. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day.